Hi there, welcome to Elm Colors. I'm Erica, and on today's video, I am going to be working in Ticket to Dreams and using my Caran d'Ache Super Colors. Um, I have done a review of these, and I will link that up in the corner so you guys can see that, but I wanted to play with these today, and I thought maybe you guys would enjoy watching that. So, we are going to be doing, let me get to the page. Since this is still May, I am working on this mermaid page. I'm not doing this side because it creeps me out. So we're just going to fold that over so I don't even have to look at it. <laughs> uh, but we are. I'm going to be doing this page. If you have this book and want to um, color along, I'll let you know what I'm using as I use them. And um, hopefully this goes well. I don't really have a plan. So we will see how it goes. Um, I've got some water brushes here and yeah, I think we'll just get started. So I thought I would start actually first with some of these gemstones down here. Um, using watercolors for gemstones, if you're able, is a really awesome way to kind of make them look neat and, um, uh, what's the word? I don't know, flowy, I guess kind of, you know, how the gems colors will change here and there. So I'm going to use, I think, some pinky purple colors. So right now I have um, purple. And then I'm going to grab this um, periwinkle blue and the violet here. And we'll go with these and see how that goes. Maybe just, I'll grab this pink as well. I'm working with a very limited range of colors. So we'll see, we'll see what I'm able to, to create. So I'm just gonna go through, and first I'm gonna color with these just like I would be using like regular colored pencils. Not, not quite as much attention um, to detail, but you don't wanna leave any huge gaps um, in the, in your coloring, like you don't want it to be really streaky, like um, like this. You don't want to have a bunch of lines in between. Um, you want to color like you would color with your um, regular color pencils. So I'm going to go through. I'm going to get some of these in here. And you can overlap the colors as you color with it. You know what? I'm going to move you guys in so you can see what I'm doing. Hang on just a second. There. I hope that's better. And I hope that you are, that my laundry is not too loud in the background. Um, I had that going and didn't even think about it. I just wanted to start coloring and, and have fun. So we've got some colors here and there. I'm going to make this one all pinks. Okay, and then I'm gonna use some purples as well. So let's get in here and we'll get some of the color down on this. And I don't really have a plan of where I'm putting the colors. It's just kind of wherever, wherever I feel like it, it should have some, really. All right, let me get a little bit in here and then I'm gonna mix kind of the two of them maybe into this part so let's put some lighter color up here and here grab this purple color this is my lighter purple and like I said I don't really have a plan so we'll see how this this goes here I'm not sure exactly how this is going to end up looking but that's kind of the fun of it sometimes you know it's just kind of experimenting and seeing how it goes um yeah i'm gonna put a little bit out here put some of that there a little bit of the pink mm, okay so we've got a little bit more purple in here here. I am just going to go ahead and color all of these in really quick. I probably should have some kind of paper 
behind my project. I always forget that. Well, not always, but I forget it a lot because I'm excited. I just want to get started coloring. All right, let's make these guys a little more pink. This one can be purple here. And this page is, is kind of a, it's a really like a darker page. So I'm not really sure how much, how like bright to make things or, oops, let's do this light purple up here. And you can vary your pressure um, with these pencils as well. So if you want like some really dark, dark pink, like right in here, you can push pretty hard. And that just puts more um, color on the paper for your the water to react to. I'm gonna add a little bit in there. Maybe a little purple over here. I think all of this is supposed to be gems as well. Yeah, I'm just gonna color it all. So we're gonna get some purple down in here. And then let's go into some pinks up here. Um, yeah, this is the first time I've worked in this book. Um, I tested the watercolors a little bit on the test page and it looks like they might kind of, once you um, activate them, you have a little bit of time to work with them, but then after that, they kind of, um, which color I wanna use this one? They kind of stay in place. So it's always a good idea to test, find a page somewhere in your book, either a, a, an image you don't like as much or, um, Sometimes artists will actually put test pages in the book to test your mediums and see what's going to work best for you. I always try to test out my um, my mediums before I use them. Um, let's do. We're going to do some purple down here. You can just see I'm just basically cycling through um, different colors. I don't really have a plan. I'm just kind of going wherever. I feel like, okay, let's see how that, this works. So I've got my water brush here. And I'm just going to start. Um, I also have a paper towel here that I'm going to use to clean off my brush regularly. So I'm going to start in a lighter area and move into the area that has more pigment. And you can kind of see how quickly that blends out. These pencils are so awesome. to go in and add some more color because this seems to be like just a base color here. And you can paint right over that black because it's going to be It's black, so it's supposed to be kind of sticking out or covering up. It's like the shadow of the plant. Um, yeah, that's not looking bad. And a lot of the times things will take a couple of coats, um, a 
especially with water mediums. And although that purple one turned out pretty cool right there. <laughs> All right, so let me work. I've got some pink here. I'll try to blend that around a little bit as best I can. Clean my brush off and then come in with this purple. Now this um, periwinkle color really almost disappears if you don't have very much pigment on the paper. All right, let's see what we get over here. The other nice thing about the black background is you don't have to worry if you go out of line <laughs> a little bit. So there's the pink over here, and then this is that darker pink color. And with gems, you do want them to be varied. You don't want it to just be a solid color all the way through because it's supposed to be reflecting things back at you at different um, gosh I don't know if wavelengths is the right word but um, different points in the spectrum in the light spectrum I guess okay pink here and then the purple The only downside to using a paper towel sometimes is it sucks up the water from your or water brush and it starts to get a little dry. Almost done with that part. Okay, that doesn't look too bad. We'll give that a minute to dry. And this part's almost dry already, and that's where we started. So um, let's go over here and work on this side a little bit. I'm going to use the same color scheme, same color palette. So I'm actually going to start with some pinks. Now. This anglerfish that's up here is creating a lot of light, and it's really the only light source um, in, in this underwater scene. So I don't really know how to respond to that, <laughs> if that makes sense. I feel like trying to figure out shadows and light sources and everything from that is just going to be too much for me for my little brain to to figure out so I'm just gonna kind of color it like I would a normal picture and hope that it ends up looking all right um I've seen some I mean there's some artists out there that just do the most amazing um things with light and shadow and I just it's just eludes me every time I try to figure things out I just look at it and I just get stuck but that's okay because I'm just here to have fun and I'm not it's not like somebody's paying me to figure out the secrets of the light so I'm not beating myself up about it. This is just for fun. And if it looks pretty in the end, that's really all that matters, right? All 
Okay. Now I'm leaving, I know earlier I said not to leave like um, gaps in between the coloring, but I the only reason I'm doing that here is because I do want some of the, um, I do want some white space for the color to move around. And um, yeah, it's not easy to get around these these guys. Um, so yeah, I don't want just a solid block of color because I think I got a little too much color on these side, this side. But uh, we'll see how it how it goes over here. I'm just gonna start going. And then once I have this color on, I can always go back and add more. Um, especially in this book, since this color kind of is set, it's not going to overly react if I add more water on top. Um, Derwent ink tents, you can layer and layer and layer to your heart's content as long as your paper can take it because that color is not moving once you put it down. So this one seems to be... I doubt on different paper it would react the same way, but on this paper it, it kind of just wants to stay where you put it. Okay. And it's always a learning curve when you start with a new medium. So I um, I always end up liking something that I've done multiple times towards the end of it once I'm done doing everything and then I'm like oh yeah I finally got the hang of how to how to blend that how to shade that how to so we'll see I'm gonna leave a lot of white space in this part right here. Let's see if I can get that. Now I am gonna to have to turn the book here for a second so that I can get to this purple area down here. So, because I want it, I want the color to stay kind of in that area. So I'm gonna be pushing the water or the paint kind of into this corner more. And then I can move it outward from there a little bit to blend it. Um, let's see what else we got. I think that's the last of it right there. All right, let me turn you back around. Okay, not bad. Um, yeah, this part over here is already dry. Did I get the, I missed this whole section right here. <laughs> okay. So now what I'm gonna do, I think I'm gonna take color directly from the pencil, and that's really easy. So you just hold the pencil in one hand, water brush in the other, run the tip of the water brush against the um, pencil, and then you can see on the end of that there, I've got some, some color. And I'm just gonna come in and dot a little bit of that color around. And be careful not to splatter. I just splattered a little bit here. So you can get a splatter effect depending on how wet your um, water brush is. So that's something to keep in mind if you ever want to experiment with splatter effects a little bit. Now you'll notice when I put that dark purple onto this pink, it doesn't automatically go dark purple because these watercolor um, pencils are a little more, um, <laughs> I can't remember the word. It's the opposite of opaque. <laughs> I remember that word just fine. Um, yeah, you can see through them a little bit more. They don't, it takes multiple layers. They're not, they don't create that opaque look. Um, like something like a neo color would if you had enough layers of that that would give you an opaque look but these um, 
these watercolor pencils, they're more about being able to see what you've done underneath. So. Okay, I like that. I'm gonna add a little bit more right in there. Brandy's dry. Nope, not quite yet. If you touch your page and it feels um, a little cold, that's usually a sign that it's not quite dry yet. Um, what do we think? I'm wondering what color I should do like all of the water and stuff. I mean, I'm guessing a blue, but I don't know if I wanna do like a super dark blue or if I wanna try to do like a, like continue the black into it a little bit. Let's try this blue jeans color. That's kind of a, um, that's kind of a grayish blue. And we'll go from there. I'm gonna leave this area around the anglerfish bright white, I think, maybe just a little bit of color at the edges. Um, but up here, I'm just gonna go through and add color. And this, in the, in the open spaces, I'm gonna have to be a little bit more careful about making sure I don't have big gaps between my strokes of my pencil. But um, in the places where there's like a lot of black, I think it'll be fine. And you don't have to have your pencil angled the same way as long as you're not pushing too hard because then your pencil strokes will not be um, picked up. Okay, I'm going to color a little bit over here. I am going to color in these bubbles. I will go over them eventually with like a white... Um, Posca or gel pen and um, bring those back out but I'm for now I'm just gonna color over the bubbles I gotta turn my page a little here okay I just want to get this done quickly so that I can show you guys Now this is, like I said earlier, this is for my mermaid um, hashtag that I'm doing over on Instagram. Um, if you color anything and you're not on Instagram and you have a YouTube channel, um, let me know. I would love to see it. And then if you are on Instagram, make sure to give me, make sure to tag me. Oh, I was doing stuff that you guys did. I just did this part here. Uh, make sure to tag me and um, so I can see your pages. This is also one of the books that I um, wanted to make sure that I colored in because I have a stack of books now that I have to color in before July and when you have a coloring slump in the middle of the month that you want to get a lot done that's not real great okay yeah I'm gonna go ahead and add some blue just to the edges around this Just a little bit. I feel like this color is probably going to disappear a, a lot once I start adding water in. So let's see how that goes. So I'm just going to add the water really quick. and I'm going to pull this color in towards the, the white space. And this is another area where I will clean my brush off in between a few strokes here and there so that I don't get too much blue on the inside. I 
want some, but not a ton. If that makes any kind of sense. Okay. Well, there's that. Let's see. I'm not sure how I feel about these. I don't think you can really see them on camera, but I can see like around some of these, there's a definite blue discoloration into the black, but I think it'll be okay. I think. So let's focus on the mermaid. Let's get some hair and skin done. And I am going to go with an off color for her skin. So I think I'm going to make her, let's see. Um, I think I'm going to make her like a turquoise blue color. So let's see if I can find that color. Yep, there's that one. Um, so let me just get her in frame. And I'm just going to go ahead and color her all over first with this turquoise color, her skin. And then I am going to come in with a little bit slightly darker color, do a little bit of shading, and then add my water. And I'm not putting a ton of pigment on the paper. So you can see I'm holding my pencil pretty far back so that I'm not pushing too hard. Um, so I used that turquoise blue color. Now I think I'm going to come in with a little bit of this malachite green. Um, yeah, there's that. And I'm going to add in just in a couple places where shadows might be. I'm going to add in, and, um, the artist has already put some of the lines in here where you can add a little bit of shadow. And some, some places you want to add a little more, some places you want to add a little less. This side of her face is a little more. And her hairline. And we'll see how that goes. And I'm going to use a smaller water brush to do her face. I'm going to do her face first. This is the Pentel Aquash, and it um, has a very, very fine tip, so I am going to use that here. So I'm gonna start in the lighter area and go into that darker area so that that shadow stays where it's supposed to be. And I think that the color is staying in place because this paper just sucks up water like crazy. So you have to work pretty quickly with that color if you want it to. Okay. And then I'm gonna switch back to my other because I don't need it to be as, as detailed, I don't think. Okay, again, starting with the lighter color in the lighter color and working towards my darker color. Clean off my brush once I get in that dark color. Okay, I'm gonna turn the book as I work. 
apologize if that makes anybody motion sick or anything like that. That's looking pretty nifty so far. I like the skin color. Turning again. I'm gonna go to the hand here. Get my shadow in place. Now this one just had a very light shadow, so I'm just gonna do one stroke across that and hopefully that shadow will stay where it was. See, I gotta turn the book again. Here we go. One of these days I'll learn how to color without turning my book all over the place. I apologize. Okay, let's get this area right in here. I'm going to push this color into this shadow down here. Okay, and then we're going to go right back up and finish off her neck here. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit of this color to the places where she's got some lines in there. Okay, I like her. That looks good. Let's see, what color do we want for her? We've got tail and hair. So I'm thinking for her tail, I think I want this, I want this malachite green, I believe. Is that what I was just using? Yeah, so I want some of this malachite green and I think I wanna mix it with one of these other greens that's in here. So I'm gonna mix it I think with the spruce green. So we'll see how that goes. So I'm gonna get her tail into focus for you guys in a frame. And I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do lighter pressure on the areas where it doesn't look like there would be shadows and darker pressure where she's got the extra lines. And this whole section, all the way, all of this down here is, is her tail. So this is like the rim light of her tail. I probably should have made it like purples and pinks. It's reflecting the light from those gems, but that's okay. Again, I'm not worried about my lighting sources and things like that. Just filling in with color right now. Okay, and then I'm going to add... Um, I am going to take this color up into the bodice of the mermaid too. And then I think I'm going to add in, not the spruce green, but the grass green. I think that's the one that I'm going to use. So let's add in this color and I'm just going to color right over top of it of wherever I put, have put color already, and I'm just doing a very light layer all over. Here, I'm not really worrying about my strokes either. I'm just kind of doing a light shading all the way across. I'm gonna go along where the tail ends down there. I'm not gonna worry about the fin yet. So let's see how we did. So we're gonna come up here I'm going to start in my lighter area and work towards, yeah, that's a different shade than the skin. I was worried it was going to be too close to the skin to, oops, to have, um, and we wouldn't be able to differentiate. So I'm going to try right now really quickly 
to push that color. Nope, that's in there. Okay. I got a little bit on her arm, but that's okay. Okay, I do like that color. Um, all right, so let's get, I'm gonna again start in these lighter areas. Off a little bit. All right, then we've got this dark color in here, and I can start. Feeding that out into colors around it. All right, let's get a side done. That's looking pretty good. Let's see, let's see. What do we think? Yeah, that's a cute mermaid. She looks like she'd be down under the sea, right? All right, let's do the tail really quick. I'm gonna do the fin the same colors as <clears throat> excuse me, the fin, the same colors as her tail. So I'm going to go in with this malachite green first. <music> For her hair, I want to do a little bit of a mix. I want to have some of the Prussian blue. So this really dark blue, this really dark blue that's right here. And I want to mix that with some of the Malachite green, I think, and um, a little bit of the turquoise. So I don't want this jade anymore. Um, but I do want the turquoise or the grass green anyway. I want the turquoise. Okay. Um, and I think I'm going to go over all of the hair with really lightly with the malachite green again, but really lightly, like not dark at all. <laughs> going to start yelling at me so I might have to break this up into two videos so let's get the hair done and then oh, we're so close to being done I just want to get it done yeah I think I think what I'm gonna to have to do is I'll just I'll finish off the hair and then um, I'll come in and we'll do the I'll finish the angler fish her crown things like that, and then I will add in some white, I'll add in my white gel pen highlights and the, um, any like, 
I don't know, stickles or anything like that that I think needs to be added in or that I want to add in. It's not that it needs to be added in, <laughs> just that I want to add it in. Okay, her hair is awfully close to her skin color, so I might have to change that a little bit. Maybe add in a little bit more of that Prussian blue. I did use the same colors on her hair as I did on her skin, though, so that's that's my fault. My bad. Yeah, see, I need a little bit more right there. So I can just grab it right now and add it in. Um, I'll get quite a bit in there. Hopefully that change it enough. Okay. Yeah, see this is nice and blue. I do want it to look different from the um, water as well, but I also want her to I want her to kind of be blendy any. She should be similar to her surroundings, is what I'm trying to say. Blendy any. Just ignore me. Um, just a few more strands. This part, the part's down here. Yeah, her strands do kind of look like the ocean, like the watercolor that's added in, but... I'll do my best so that you can tell that it's hair and not water. Okay. Almost done with this part and then yeah, and then we'll wrap it up. A little bit more. Okay. All right, let me zoom you back out. Okay, so there is what we've done today. So we did her skin, tail, gemstones, and her hair. Um, and then in the next video, we'll do the um, anglerfish, her crown, and then add in any um, fun stuff that we want, any sparkly things. So... Um, thank you so much for joining me today and until next time, I'll see you later. Bye.